going to jump straight in. Uh, if you've got your Bible, uh, I encourage you now to turn to, to Mark chapter 2. Um, it's page 2050 in my Bible. That's no help to you at all, but um, just thought I'd throw that out there. Mark chapter 2, and there's, uh, there's 12 verses here from verse 1 that, that we're going to just look at. And um, just going to read through, going to share some stuff, and then we're going to dive back into it and just kind of see how it relates and, and, and what I really feel that God's saying to us this morning through this, this passage of Scripture. So um, here we go. Mark chapter 2, verse 1. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered, and there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, they lowered the mat the paralyzed man was lying on. Verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some of the teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit, using the gift of discernment that we see here, immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that, that this is what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat and walk, but that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, he took his mat and he walked out in full sight of them all, in full view of them all. This amazed everyone and they praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. What an incredible story. Lord, I just pray this morning, Lord, as, as, as we dive into this scripture, Lord, into this story, Lord, I pray that it would come alive to us. Lord, you would, you would cause our hearts, Lord, to, to, to get excited. Lord, I pray that faith would even begin to rise right now in this place. Lord, I pray that we would go with a greater expectation from, from this place for this year, Lord, as we dig into the, to the words that are yours here this morning. Lord, I pray if, if these are just some clever, silly thoughts of my own, Lord, I pray they would fall to the ground. But Lord, if these words are yours, Lord, if they are good, if they are true, Lord, if they will encourage and build us up, Lord, I pray that they would, they would hit our hearts, Lord, like a ton of bricks here this morning. In your mighty name, amen. Amen. All right, so, um, you know, we're, we're, well, we're well and truly into 2019, aren't we? Like, January's done and dusted this week. Like, it's, it's over, you know? Um, often, January's a bit of a month of, of rest, of, of reflection, refocusing. Um, has anyone, like, worked through, the, like, the Christmas and the January break? Yeah, I see that hand. Yeah, that's tough, mate. Man, we'll pray for you later. Um, has anyone else worked right through? Has, has anyone not had a rest? Oh, it's good. We've all, we've all had a bit of a rest day. Like, often, January is that month of, of rest, of, of reflection, refocusing, and and some of us are more inclined to, to get in and, and, and plan and, and to set goals. Some of us absolutely hate setting goals and planning. We just like to wing it off the seat of our pants. Um, but, you know, as you plan, as you reflect, as you refocus, it's kind of that sense of getting the year off to a good start. And they say, you know, like, you know, we need to get off to a good start. We need to, to get things moving. And anyway, whether that's you, whether you're a planner, whether you're just winging it off the seat of your pants, oh, I want to ask this question this morning. Spiritually, where are you heading this year? Spiritually, where are you heading this year? You know, we've had a month already, pretty much had a month to, to kind of get into this year and, and to take some steps. And, and with that said, what direction are we facing? You know, I think it's a pretty good way of kind of diagnosing or, or working out which, which direction we're heading is by looking at which way we're currently facing. And uh, this morning, spiritually, which, which way are we facing? What direction uh, are you facing? Are you facing towards Christ? Are you looking towards Him? You know, I want to say this morning, spiritually, don't stay where you are this year. Spiritually, don't stay where you are, and definitely don't go backwards. You know, that'd be a bad move. Don't go backwards. But 
what I, what I really want to say is, in fact, plan to spiritually go forward this year. You know, whether you're a planner or whether you're not, I, I, I want to say, and we need to be intentional. I believe if we intentionally plan to go forward spiritually this year, God will do what he's so good at. God will do what he's so good at, and that's exceeding our expectations. And this morning I've entitled my sermon, Exceeding Our Expectations. Exceeding Our Expectations. You see, God is in the business of exceeding. He's in the business of overwhelming. He's in the business all about that double portion. You know, you spend time in this word. If you spend time hanging out, you know, with other Christians that are good Christians, you know, living by the book. If, if we're reading this word, if we're spending time in his presence, you can't help but see that God is, is in the business of exceeding, uh, exceeding our expectations, of overwhelming, of overflowing. And it, it's, it's right there. It's, it's all in there, double portion, multiplying. Uh, man, there's some incredible stuff in the Gospels that, that talk about God's multiplication and his double portion. But with that said, if you're a God-fearing Christian, you know that on the flip side, there's the enemy, the enemy, the devil. And, and he's in the business of sabotage, straight up. He's, he's in the business of sabotage. He's in the business of deception. It's, it's all about destroying. It's all about bringing terror. You know, there's, there's such a contrast between the two, and we know that, you know, it's, it's Christianity 101. But, but this morning, I just, just kind of wanted to point that out again, just to kind of cement that in our heads, that God is in the business of exceeding, and the devil is in the business of sabotage. Interesting. See, I've got a bit of a story. Um, if, if you're a visitor or if you haven't been with us for that long, um, 12 months ago, we were doing church upstairs. 12 months ago, we were doing church upstairs, and, and we're lucky today. It's, uh, according to the little clock up here, it says 24 degrees. Last year, 12 months ago, when we were upstairs in January and February, man, it must have been tipping 30 degrees. Like, it's so hot up in that room. And um, see, the reason we were doing church down there, and, and all of you who have been with us, you know, um, and, and, and experienced last year, you're probably sick of me talking about the flood. But you see, we had a flood here. We had, we had about 300 mils of water go right through our kids' area, our, our, uh, our cafe, our office, our toilet block, just right through. It even came right up into our auditorium here. And um, wow, crazy, crazy journey that was. We did 22 services upstairs. This time, 12 months ago, this place was in disarray. The, you know, the cupboards were ripped up. The, the walls were all chopped at like 600 high. Like everything was just a shambles. It was a mess. Uh, tradies had been in. It was, it was chaotic. Now, now we're back down in this freshly renovated space. And it's, it's looking beautiful. It's looking sharp. You know, but I want to say that this reno is not just about superficial things. It's not just about the new carpet and, and, and the new paint on the walls. It's, it's not about like the, the, the bright colors out there and, and some of the fresh new stuff that we've got. You know, what happened is, is my faith went to a whole other level. You see, 12 months ago, I was, I was on my knees freaking out. God, what are you doing? What's happening here? You know, we, we, we processed it. We worked through it. We called it our blessing in disguise. But 12 months later, where are we sitting now in this, in this beautiful space? You know, God's taken my faith to a whole other level. He's, he's taken my trust to a whole other level where, where I can now say, God, man, you do have our back. Lord, you're not going to leave us stranded. You're not going to leave us, you know, wading through ankle, knee-deep water, wondering, man, are we up a creek here without a paddle? But God, you've got our back. And, and you know, man, my expectations... Last year, we're, we're completely exceeded. And, and I believe if, if you were part of our church, uh, the expectation that, that we had as a church, I, I believe you felt, um, you, you are feeling, and, and you've seen that, that our expectations have completely been exceeded. So I want to say this morning, what, what are your expectations for this year? And do you believe that God can exceed them? Do you believe that God can exceed them? I want to jump back into our chunk of scripture that we looked at this morning and, and just go, well, God, how does this relate to, to us and, and how does this relate to us exceeding our expectations? I want to say right from the get-go that this story, this chunk of scripture is, is absolutely tailor-made to exceed our expectations, to, to show us that the God we serve 
is all about just blowing our minds, taking us from something small to, to something big. You know, and, and I think about that whole mustard seed, the faith of a mustard seed. You know, all we need is a, a little bit of faith, but, you know, I think about it, it's like, you know, that mustard seed grows to be one of the, the biggest trees, one of the, the biggest plants that says in Scripture that, that the birds will come and rest and shelter. And it's, man, God, God says, do you have the faith to go from a mustard seed to, to a massive tree? And do you trust His principles? Do you trust who He is? Where are your expectations? Anyway, let's, let's jump into this. This is, this is going to be a little bit reflective of, of expectations, but also just some of the stuff that's, that's in, the midst, uh, in, the, in the middle of the story. So, so come with me here, back to Mark chapter 1, or chapter 2, verse 1. And it says there, a few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum. And for me, I don't just like to read Scripture, I, I like to go, well, what's going on here? It says a few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, well, makes me think, well, what happened a few days earlier then when he entered Capernaum? And, and, and so I jump back, and, and if you look in the, the next page of my Bible, Mark chapter 1, verse 20, 21 and 22, this is what happened a few days earlier. When they then came to Capernaum, when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogues and began to teach. It says here, verse 22, the people were amazed at his teaching because he taught, he taught them as one who had authority, not as one, uh, not as a teacher of the law. You see, these people were, were used to the religious leaders, the people of the day, you know, just quoting, quoting previous religious guys, previous quotes. But see, Jesus came and he, he, he spoke differently. The people were completely amazed, completely amazed at the way he taught the authority that was upon his life. And I want to say that that position doesn't always give you authority. See, these religious leaders, these guys kind of running the show at the synagogue, you know, they're thinking, yeah, we've got authority because we've got the position. But it clearly says in the scripture that, that man, Jesus came and he, he spoke differently. The people were completely amazed because he taught them as one who had authority. You see, the anointing is what gives the authority. The anointing is, is what will give you the authority in your life. It's the presence of God, it's the Holy Spirit within you that will give you authority. Yeah, you can kind of push people around when you're in a position and feel like you're the boss or, or, or play the boss card, but I tell you, true authority, genuine authority comes from the anointing. Anyway, so a few days earlier, the people were amazed. See, the news began to travel, it began to spread that, that Jesus was in town. Quickly, it spread throughout the whole region of, of Galilee. And that's what happened a, a few days earlier. So if we jump back, Mark chapter 2, verse 1 again. A few days later, when Jesus again enters Capernaum, the people heard that he'd, he'd come home. So it's this natural progression, verse 2. So many gathered that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. And right there, that's a good Sunday service. Like, look around, there's a few empty seats, eh? Look at, look at what took place here. So many gathered that there was, there was no room left, not even outside the doors. You know, the only thing that Jesus needed to do was probably just take up an offering, and it would have just been the perfect service, you know? Like it would have been signed, sealed, delivered. This is amazing. But, but can you guys see this? The, the, the place was packed out. Man, there was no room left, not even outside the door. Why? Why was it like that? Because Jesus was in the house. Jesus was in the house. Let's, let's come to church with Jesus in our hearts, with, with Jesus in our minds. Man, let's come to church expecting to meet with Him. Because as we make room for Him, as we welcome Him into this place, I believe many people will begin to gather. Many people will continue to gather. It is, it is the name of Jesus that draws people. It's absolutely the name of Jesus. It's, it's not the fancy clothes that the, the pastor or the worship team wears. It's, it's not the fancy paint on the walls and, and, and the, the nice coffee that we might sell out the back. It's, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. See, verse 3 and 4, is, as we move on, this is where things change up. The place was packed. There was no room left. Jesus was preaching the word. 
And, and then verse 3 and 4 happens. This is kind of like the altar call begins. You see, verse 3 and 4, we see men. Some men come bringing to him a, a paralytic, carried by four, carried by four men. Since they could not get to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus after digging through it, and they lowered the mat, and the paralyzed man was lying on, that the paralyzed man was lying on. And, and you know, this is a pretty well-known bunch of scripture or, or, or story. You know, a lot of us have heard people preach about it, have heard people kind of talk about how this took place. And, and back in biblical days, the, the houses were built of stone. They had uh, timber kind of rafters that run across that stone, and on top of them, they lay branches, branches all top of, on top of that. And then there was this mixture of, of mud and straw that they, they made these flat roofs with. Okay, so you can kind of begin to see that, oh yeah, it was possible to, to kind of dig through this roof. You see, in order to do that, there'd be an external staircase that was built on the side of the building that, the, that these guys could get up and, and construct this roof for, or I can imagine that there'd be, need to be maintenance, you know? So there was this, this staircase. So you can kind of begin to imagine and see these guys turning up to the scene. It's fully packed. They oh, can't get in. Okay, let's, let's use the staircase. Let's begin to dig through the roof. And, and just, I'm just trying to get you to kind of get your head into the story this morning, just to see and feel what it was like. Verse 5. Verse 5 is a, a pretty, pretty amazing verse. It says, When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. You see, this verse, this verse 5 is, is the pinnacle point of the story, yet it's, it's a little bit camouflaged because of what happens next. And, and before we kind of move on, I just want to draw our attention to this verse. I want to I look at it again. When Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, the faith of all five of these guys, Jesus saw their compassion. Jesus saw their determination. He, he he knew what was going on in their hearts. He, he knew what the story was. See, the place was packed out. There was, there was no way in. But these men, they didn't give up. They got creative. They took action. And, and I love this. I love this. You know, this year we're going to be launching a few more small groups. You know, these five guys were like a small group. Man, they were motivating each other. They were spurring each other along. And these guys weren't just doing the synagogue on Sunday. They weren't just going on the Sabbath. But I reckon they were hanging out during the week. They were talking about God. They were, they were talking about Jesus. And, and when he turned up, when he came to town, they were all like, man, we've, we've got to get our mate there. Come on, let's band together. Let's rally together. Man, these guys were a small group. Man, they knew how to do life together. And I tell you what, they didn't let a, a little bit of mud stop them. They, you know, they, they were prepared to get their hands dirty, to get a little bit sweaty, to do a bit of damage, to interrupt the meeting, even embarrass themselves. Can you imagine it? What a crazy idea. In the middle of a meeting to just suddenly decide they're going to dig through and burst through a roof. You know, like, we're talking the Middle East, man. We're talking over, it'd be hot as. They'd probably get the hole open and they'd just be sweating, dripping down. They're trying to slide this dude on. Oh, it'd be chaotic. It'd be incredible. You know, it wouldn't just be this, like, you know, nice little hole with the chainsaw or the skill saw or whatever. It's like, man, it would have been a mess. There would have been debris falling through. It uh, would have been hectic. These guys have... have if it all went south, if it all went to custard, man, they were going to look like idiots. Like what? Is, and the damage that they'd done to the place. Crazy, crazy. But they didn't let, they didn't let all of that stop them. They didn't let that stop them. They just wanted to get their mate face to face with Jesus. You see, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. You see, Jesus meets with this man face to face for the first time, for the first time, and straight away, what does he do? He meets the man's deepest need, and he looks through the, the frailness of our existence, of our, of our temple, of our, our, our human body, and man, he saw the soul, he saw the spirit, he saw the heart of this man. He didn't, he didn't care that he was, he was paralyzed, he didn't care that he was a paralytic, man, he saw that there was... There was a need for forgiveness in his heart. And Jesus, right there in that moment, face to face, looked at him and, and sorted out his deepest need, gave him forgiveness. See, this is the greatest miracle that we can ever have. See, it reaches beyond this life into eternity, greater than any physical healing. 
No, sin forgiven equals salvation. Jesus saw their faith. Can you see where we're going here this morning? Jesus saw their faith. You see, today and every day, Jesus is looking at us. Jesus is looking at me. Jesus is looking at you. Does he see your faith? Does he see your faith? What can Jesus see? Verse 6 and 7, moving through. Now the teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? You know, and it doesn't surprise me to see this kind of kickback straight after this great miracle. You know, this, this camouflage miracle, the pinnacle point of the story, verse 5. It doesn't surprise me to see this kind of kickback. And, and I've written here, religion will always try to shut down a miracle. And in this occasion, it was trying to rob and disqualify the paralytic of his salvation by discrediting the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. Religion will always try to discredit the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. But, oh man, I love this. Jesus was one step ahead and showing that great discernment like we talked about before, immediately challenged them and shut them down, just, just shut them down before they were even able to open their mouths. Man, they were thinking it in their heads. They were thinking it in their hearts. Jesus, with discernment, knew straight away what was going on. And before they could even say a word to, to bring discouragement to this, this, this man who had just had this incredible miracle of his sins forgiven, before they could even speak that out, Jesus was onto it. Immediately, it says, immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit what they were thinking. And what did he say? Why are you thinking these things? Why are you thinking these things? See, at the start of this year, one of the, the biggest things that can, can hold us back is our thinking. You see, the wrong kind of thinking will extinguish your expectations, will extinguish your faith. Why are you thinking these things, Jesus said? I really believe God's saying to some of us here today, why are you thinking the way you're thinking? Your thoughts are negative, they're wrong. Clouding your judgment, bringing distance between you and God. You've got stinking thinking. Why are you thinking this way? Maybe it's, it's creating distance between you and your spouse. Maybe it's creating distance between you and your family and your friends, the way you're thinking. Jesus said to these religious guys, to this, to, to this ugly kind of religion that, that poked its head up, he said, why are you thinking these things? Why are you thinking these things? This morning I say the same to you. Why are you thinking the way you're thinking? I love where Jesus goes with this. This is, this is pretty cool. I love it, uh, uh, just how he kind of launches in in verse 9 through to 12. He comes in here to remove all doubt, cementing his power and his, and his authority. And we see it here in verse 9. What have we got? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins he said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, he took his mat, and he walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone. And they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. We've never seen anything like this in our entire lives. We have never seen the scene that just took place, this 12 verses, this little story of these crazy guys taking a risk, the compassion in their hearts, the motivation, the determination, the expectation of digging through a roof, of, of lowering a man down, putting themselves in, in a potentially embarrassing situation. We would never do that. Hands up if, if you'd be the first person to jump in and sign up for that. Man, I, I don't know if we would. Man, these guys were keen. But that's what added to the fact that these people had never seen anything like this before. Church, we serve an incredibly mighty God. 
Man, he's in the business of exceeding and overwhelming. Man, this year he wants to exceed your expectations, your understanding, your faith, your trust. And what's real interesting here is, is a lot of churches, a lot of congregations, a lot of church leaders, a lot of church pastors would have been so excited right back at verse 2. You know, at that point where the story, it says, what does it say? So many were gathered that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. You know, think about that. We'd be happy to, you know, close the meeting and shoot off to lunch and be high-fiving everyone. Man, that was an awesome meeting. It was packed. It was so full that people couldn't even get in from outside. Man, the word was preached to so many people today. You know, what's your expectation of church? You know, that, that picture, verse 2, is bigger than, than what all of us are probably thinking here this morning. Man, did you come with the expectation that you needed to get here early because there might not be a seat? That there might be so many people here? You know, where's our expectations at? What are, what are, we, what are we thinking? What are we, is our stinking thinking dictating terms? Do we, do we have an expectation? I don't know, interesting. And a lot of people would have been so happy just to finish it there at verse 2 and go, go on home. But I want to say that that is only the beginning. See, wherever Jesus is, expectations will always be exceeded. Wherever Jesus is in your life, there will always be expectations exceeded. And if you carry him in your heart, if he's walking with you, if he's the head of your family, if he's the one that, that you cry out to and, and seek after, the one who you thank after an incredible day and an amazing experience, then man, he will be in the business of exceeding, of overwhelming, of double portions. See, for the small group of men that brought their paralyzed mate to see Jesus, their expectation, or at least their hope, was that Jesus might reach out and heal him. But I want to say in typical fashion, Jesus completely exceeded their expectations, not only by sending five men home walking, but he also forgave the man his sins, a complete healing inside and out, leaving the entire crowd praising God and saying, we've never seen anything like this. He says we trust God as we put our faith in him, planning to go forward spiritually this year. How far Will he exceed our expectations? I know for a fact that God, is, God has got an incredible year for us as a church. And I want to say God's got an incredible year for you and your family and those around you. And if you've got Jesus close to you, if Jesus is in the house, if Jesus is in your house, then man, he's, he's going to do what he does best. He's going to exceed I want to read this uh, chunk of scripture. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 to 12, and it's, uh, it's in the Passion Translation. It says here, you don't have to turn there because it's, uh, it's quite a different translation, this one, but it's, it's really good. This generous God who supplies abundant seed for the farmer, which becomes bread for our meals, is even more extravagant towards you. First, he supplies every need plus more. Then he multiplies the seed as you sow it so that the harvest of your generosity will grow. You will be abundantly enriched in every way as you give generously on every occasion. For when, you take, for when we take your gifts to those in need, it causes many to give thanks to God. The priestly ministry you're providing through your offering not only supplies what is lacking for God's people and inspires an outpouring of praise and thanks giving to God himself. You see, God provides, God multiplies, and God enriches, not just for the purpose of provision, but for overflow, more than enough, more than enough. That is the God that we serve. This story, you know, it's, it's an incredible story. It's entitled in my, in my Bible, Jesus Heals a, a, a Paralyzed Man. But man, Jesus did so much more. You know, even this title, the, the expectation uh, is exceeded. And not only did an, an entire crowd witness this incredible scene, but man, this man walked home changed, different. Man, set free inside, healed on the inside and the out. This incredible experience. 
And no one had ever seen anything like it. Again, let's go forward spiritually this year. Let's be intentional. Man, how far can God exceed our expectations? I just want to pray.